Welcome back. Today we have joining us Lorraine Williams, who is a therapist and a counsellor. And she's going to help us to explore this topic a little bit further. So, welcome Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Thank, Thank you, Lorraine. Lorraine. Thank you. Nice Hi. to meet you. <laughs> you know, so I, I believe you've been listening to what we've been discussing already. Absolutely. So, how do people cope with loss? Well, everybody copes differently with loss. As we've already discussed, as has already been, been shown up, loss is such an enormous subject from a therapeutic point of view mm -hmm. in helping people to overcome loss. So we've got bereavement, which is obviously dealing with the, with the death of something that's really important to us, like a loved one or a mm -hmm. pet. Um, and, and these things are really, really hard for everybody to deal with. And you've got normal stages of grief mm -hmm. that have obviously been identified from a therapy point of view, uh, going back to 1969, original research that was done. Um, so that's, that's different from other types of loss. But actually, other types of loss can be just as devastating. Mm -hmm. Loss of health, loss of a career, mm -hmm. loss of a meaning to your life, yeah. loss of mm -hmm. cherished mm -hmm. dreams. Um, this, you know, loss is an enormous subject. And one of the big aspects of loss that I come across a lot is even loss of being in touch with yourself mm -hmm. if you've gone through a lot of really, really difficult situations in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you said something important there about the different stages of loss. Can, from a therapy point of view, could you? Yes, I mean, we've got a lot of them have already been touched on. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, the first stage is, is that shock and denial. Yeah. Um, that's a classic uh, frozen headlamps uh, scenario uh, where people often talk about things like, I thought he was still going to come through the door. I went to phone my mother and then I suddenly remembered. Um, these sorts of, uh, of, this is a normal reaction. The body actually just can't cope mm -hmm. and the mind actually switches us off temporarily mm -hmm. um, as we're actually just trying to deal with the absolute horrendous reality which we're not actually in touch with at that stage yeah. and that stage as we've already touched on actually can carry on mm. as well that's that sense of denial mm. going back you know you can go go on and mm. on so it's important with the five stages of grief that were first identified that we've actually we don't actually have an, an, an actual sequence that we go through mm. <laughs> everybody mm. grieves differently yeah. um, so so you know although I'm talking about five stages in this order it doesn't necessarily follow that that's mm. the order that everybody has mm. and if you're not doing it that way something's going wrong mm. for you mm. so I really want to make that point okay. so you've got shock and denial and then you move on to the anger which again has been really, really brought up. Very, very normal. We, we actually use anger as a way of deflecting ourselves from the emotional reality of the grief. Um, and it, so it'll come out in anger. We'll express our, our anger about why has this happened. We're trying to make sense of the loss. Mm. So anger is a very, very important and normal and natural stage that most people would go through. It goes mm. with the territory. That's how I felt. I was trying to make sense of why he would do it. Why would somebody, you know, so young, take his life, you know, leaving his wife and children behind, you know? And for me, that's how I dealt with trying to make sense out of why he did what he did by getting angry with him. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. anger actually can, it doesn't always have to be a destructive emotion, it can be a useful emotion yeah. in lots of different ways. But mm. it's okay to be angry. I would say if you feel that sense of anger, understand that it's a natural part mm. of what we go through. Because you know, sometimes when you deal with loss, you, you're dealing with other people's emotion at the same time. So if you're being angry, they, it, might be, it, might, it might be seen as you're not helping those around you or mm. going through loss. Or that you're losing. Or you're not coping. Or, you're coping. or that you're, yeah, you're losing. But control. is it a case that you need to be true to yourself? Yes, and it's first before it, you can help anyone. And it's also about giving yourself permission that it's okay mm. as well, mm. because mm. you're dealing with enough with the loss without having to then start to beat yourself up that mm. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not grieving quickly enough. Mm. I'm not moving on quickly enough with my life. And all the questions, especially if we, we feel guilt mm -hmm. and shame mm -hmm. with the loss, which mm. obviously, uh, you know, come in to the territory as well. Mm. So it makes it more complicated. Would you say then that grieving is an individual thing? It's something, um, and there are similarities, or do you believe that there, there are dissimilarities between individuals in the way they grieve? 
Absolutely. Everybody grieves differently. Mm. Can't emphasise that enough. Mm. Everybody um, will have different ways of coping with the different stages of the grief mm. and everybody will have their own... Um, they'll have their own code of the way that they've run their life, mm. which will be very much part of this. Mm. So let's say someone that's got a, a strong faith, mm. they believe their faith can actually be really, really helpful. Mm. People that have got lots of really good, close people that uh, can um, really support them, it's, it's hopeful that they will actually be able to cope quicker mm. than someone that's maybe not got so many people mm. in their lives. Mm. So it's very, very individual. individual. And it, you know, it can, it can go on, as we've already been touched on, for quite a long time. Mm. So there's no time scale, really, there, well, to a person's the, con grief. the conventional um, wisdom, if you like, in terms of therapy, is that if some, the, you, you've got bereavement counselling, mm -hmm. which is obviously available. But we would not offer bereavement counselling for at least six to 12 months after the event. Oh, okay. Right. So, okay. Um, three months if there was real, real sort of severe signs of problems. But that's quite rare. Okay. So normally I would say give yourself at least six months before you start to think there's something wrong with me. Do I need help? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and almost up to 12 months, I would say, six to 12 months, mm -hmm. because there isn't really very much. In fact, it can be counterproductive mm -hmm. to try and actually take medication or actually go and see a counsellor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what are the indicators that a person say. would look yeah. for to say that, you know, I really do need therapy? Well, I, again, I think the 6 to 12 month is a good sort of baseline to be mm. thinking about, you know, how long you give yourself time and permission to grieve mm. and absolutely give yourself a tick in the box that it's OK mm. to feel like this, it's OK mm. for me to not be coping, it's OK for me to be finding this really, really hard. What, what kind of things would you see as them not being coping? Is it, you know, crying too much or, you know, isolating themselves? Is it... Things like that. Absolutely. That you really I, I, see as a science. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you can have people that four years after an event, they're still crying every day. Mm -hmm. That is not normal. normal. Mm. Okay. Someone that's very, very depressed, um, can't function, can't get back to work, can't get back to a normal life. That's another indicator. Right. Mm. Sometimes also the shock of the trauma can actually have a, almost a PDSD mm. aspect to it. Oh, so you're gosh. actually in, sorry, post-traumatic mm. yes. stress. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is very rare, but yeah. it does happen. I've yeah. come across it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lorraine, can I ask you, because, you know, Kim mentioned other people. A lot of the time we, we do judge people, like she, she should cry and she should this and she should that, but how can we support someone? Because like I said, I had a friend and I did know the... The, the fiance very well and I didn't know what to say I didn't know what she needed should I hug her should I cry with her what should I do what is the right way to support people going through grief mm -hmm. it's a very common question and it's a very common dilemma because we've got so much sympathy and compassion but how to actually support someone is really really hard mm -hmm. to know about how to go about it Giving someone a hug can be fantastic, but if the person doesn't actually respond well to physical contact, it can be counterproductive. Mm. So we always have these problems when it comes to how can we support. But I would say that the most important thing to know is to learn how to listen to the person that's mm. grieving, as opposed to feeling as though we need to give them advice mm. or we need to actually talk necessarily about our own experiences mm. of grief. Yeah. That's not helpful to the grieving mm. person. Yeah. The other thing that comes up a lot that I found in bereavement counselling, talking to people that are going through this, is that they'll say, I wish people would actually talk to me about the person. person yes. Everybody yeah. avoids yeah. the subject yeah. of the person that's yeah. actually been lost. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. actually, that's the one thing that they really want to talk about. They mm -hmm. want to sort of re-engage and reconnect mm -hmm. with the joy of that person mm -hmm. when they were in their lives. Wow. Powerful. Yeah. Do, do you think yeah. it's important for for somebody to carry on as normal after they've lost somebody? Um, this is about sort of returning back to a normal way of life, yeah. like returning back, back, to, back, work. To, back, back to, work, to work, back to college, yeah. back to school, because obviously we've got children that mm. grieve as well. Mm. And so, yes, this is, the, again, this is, this is quite... It's a very individual thing, mm. OK? We would, we would normally say, in terms of, uh, in, in terms of actually what is useful to someone is to get back on course, get back mm. into some form of normality as quickly as you feel able. 
that's important. Mm. If you don't feel ready to go back to work, you shouldn't feel guilty about that. That's why the compassionate leave that's been mentioned, mm. that, you know, that, that mm. way that employers now are actually giving people compassionate mm. leave mm. and understanding that that can be helpful, yeah. that's a big step forward yes. because five years ago that wasn't the case. Yes. It's, yes. it's only really yes. been quite recent yeah. that we've got that more, more of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an aspect. Mm. But certainly what I would say is um, just the practical side of maybe just um, having a phased return to whatever it is that you need to get back to and talking about how it's going to be managed when you do return to work, because some people will be worried about, I don't want people asking me lots of questions. Yeah. I don't want to have to feel as everyone's treating me in a, in, a, mm. in a particular way. So actually just talking that through with your manager and so on might be very useful to help you to actually just mm. really feel mm. a bit more in control mm. of the return to work mm. yeah. in a phased way and not rushing too, too quickly. I know you mentioned the five stages. Yes. What is the final stage and how do you know that you've got there? The final stage is, is the best stage because it's the word acceptance, mm. which is such a big word in therapy. Mm. Yes. Yeah. If we can accept something, we know that we're actually through yeah. the other side. Yeah. And with acceptance comes that shining beam of hope. Yeah. It's a beam of light, of hope. When we actually can move towards the light in terms of saying mm -hmm. there's hope. Something really interesting as well is that the difference between grief and um, actual mourning. Okay, let's look at that for a moment. Oh. <laughs> uh, grief is actually a, na a natural way of disconnecting, dealing with the disconnection to something, mm. the loss. But actually mourning is going towards moving to a place where we reconnect so there is a difference. And a lot of people put the two things so together. A lot more healthier. Mourning is, well, is the game. I went through mourning then. <laughs> I think I went through the mourning more than the yes. grief. Yes. But I really like that because we do have to disconnect when we lose something. Yeah. Um, we have to. Yeah. But actually then we can actually look forward to reconnecting. Yeah. Mm. Can, I, can I ask quickly, is it good to, like, for example, look through people's pictures? You know, if the person has gone... Does that help or is that counterproductive? You know, looking at the person's pictures, thinking about them all the time and, you know, if they were on social media, going through their posts or going through their text messages they used to send, is that healthy when someone's passed away? Again, I would say let people be in that mm. respect. Mm. If somebody wants to listen to the recording on the, on the home phone mm. to hear the voice mm. or look at pictures or videos, that's fine. It's yeah. all fine, yeah. okay? It's amazing. Yeah. I think that's really, Love it. I think what yeah. you're saying is really important because it's like you're saying to us, however you want to deal with this, it's mm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody has a right to say to you that, no, that's not the way you're supposed to deal with it. It's all okay. Yeah. And people have to find that way of acceptance for themselves. And I think, that, I think that's really brilliant. So, and I yeah. think that can be really helpful for people yes. to see that we can reach that form of acceptance for mm. ourselves. Yeah. Right. And yeah. That, you know, yeah. I really want to thank you because that's been so, so helpful. Oh, I've been sitting goodness. here listening and thinking, oh my mm. gosh, so much information yeah. here that's useful for myself. Yep. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it's going to be useful for our viewers. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. it was really, really Indeed. brilliant. Thank yeah. you so much, thank Lorraine. You, Lorraine. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go to a short break and after this break we're going to talk more about this topic of coping with loss. So see you in a bit.